Painting the wings on an insect is probably one of the biggest challenges for fine artists. This video shares some top tips for ensuring they look as realistic as possible. Hello, I'm Paul Hopkinson, a professional wildlife artist and an online art tutor. I recently released this tutorial on how to paint a dragonfly on my online school. And one of the hardest aspects of the project was the wings. We're going to look at these in today's YouTube video. Now obviously the skills you'll learn today can be used for any insect with transparent wings. In fact, before I even started painting these wings, I decided I should practice first and I actually tried a couple of options. Now the two options I decided to use, or to test out anyway, was a size 01 permanent marker pen, or it's a waterproof pen, okay, which we use to pen and wash or pen and ink, which is this one here, as you can see. And it's got a very, very fine tip to 01. I've got a 03 and a 05 as well. In fact, I might even have a 07. So it gets thicker and thicker the, the ends as it go along. And then, as you know, we've got our normal size double zero brush with a decent tip on the end though. For doing something like this, you've got to make sure that you've got a really good tip. So for this, I actually got out a brand new brush so I can do it. Notice how I load the size double zero brush with the yellow paint. I then sort of roll it as I remove it from the palette and I take off any excess paint by dabbing it on some kitchen roll. This ensures the finest tip possible. So we're using our dark colour and that's going to be one of the mixes we've already made up which I'm guessing I'll probably use a alizarin crimson and lamp black. But I'm using the finest of touches when I'm doing this so I'm going to make sure that all the lines are very very light so hardly any pressure with your brush. And remember that when you do this, don't overload that brush, okay? So take most of the paints off that brush tip before you start working on it. I did find that initially if the paint is too dark, then you will find that it's going to look too false on there. So you need to probably thin the paint out more to a sort of milky consistency, really. Remember, this is just a test painting, that's all it's for. So I'm not really trying to produce a finished wing. So this way I'm just going to try and work out which is going to be the best method, be it using our brushes or, of course, our pen. Okay, let's switch to the size 01 waterproof pen. Now these are really good because you want to make sure that when you apply a pen in this nature, that when you add any washes over a pen, you don't want that pen to move or blur. Now in this case, fortunately, fortunately, we are in an area where we want just the watercolour paper to show through. The good thing about using the pen actually is the fact that it's always at one same size thickness, isn't it? Whereas if you apply a little bit too much pressure when you're using a brush, then you find that you can vary the thickness of the lines. So it depends on what you're after really. For the fine lines, this works quite well. However, however, I do feel it's a little bit too dark. Because that is a problem when using a pen for something like this, is that you can't kind of adjust the tonal values. So if you want to make it lighter, you can't. So I think I'll go with using the size double zero brush. It is what I tend to use, well, all the time, isn't it really? Let's make a start. I'm going to carry on with our blacky red colour, which has dried up completely. Let's put one spot of water in there for now with my pipette. And just reactivate that. So that's ready to go. That's nice and creamy as well. Let's load your brush, give it a roll. Give it a tap on some kitchen roll, a couple of times will do. And then we'll start looking at these details. I'm going to start here for now. It doesn't really matter where you start. You will find as you paint these as well, when I was doing my little test, is that some lines are thicker, some lines are thinner. They all tend to vary. They really do. So let's just get these in fairly neatly. And if you do it with the lightest of touches first, you know very well you can come back in and just, you know, darken them or widen them if you need to. But the initial thing is to really try and get a line in there, even if it's the finest line possible, with your finest little brush. <laughs> Still the underside of this uh, top part of the wing now. Avoid over overloading that uh, detail brush. So even though I'm not tapping it now, look, I'm just grabbing a tiny amount on the tip of my brush, that's all I'm doing there, look, just a very tiny amount. And this is fairly flat within my ceramic palette here, that's why I use ceramic, because the paint does lie flat in it. 
rather than if you're using a plastic palette and it tends to go kind of into the bubble of water, doesn't it? I do prefer ceramic. Okay, so let's just do this one here now. Now that's quite slim, so I'm going to go over that one again. Remember, barely touching. Two hairs and air. And every now and then, give your brush a rinse out as well, because it can start to clog with paint drying on it. And remember, when you're working on the wings, you don't have to do every single individual line and shape that you can see in the photograph. You don't, honestly. Just get the main structure in there. Just remember to use the lightest of touches as you're doing this as well. So keep it nice and pale, nice and light, and take your time, there's no rush. Now what I'm finding when I'm working on this is that some of the lines, as I mentioned earlier, are a little bit thicker, some are thinner. So remember what I said before about when your brush is nearly dry, that's the time when you want to go for the really fine lines, the really thin ones. So I'm trying to work on around here. So the outside edge is actually a little bit thicker, so if I get some more paint, I'm going to load in the very tip of this brush up. Just the very tip. And I tend to go there, I'm just barely touching like that, look. Barely touching the paper, just grazing the surface. And bringing that line across. And the same when you work on the inside areas. Barely touching the paper, see that? That's all I'm doing all the time. Taking my time with it. And when you get them really fine marks like this lot, very light, barely even noticeable sometimes because of that thin, really thin marks, that's when it works really well. Because you find some of the main lines that go through a little bit kind of deeper and a little bit thicker, should I say in there, and then you got the fine ones just inside. So now I'm going back in there again, now my paint has nearly run out on the brush. I'll keep going until I need to reload it. Creating some of these patterns that I can see within there. I'm not copying exactly what's on the screen for these, because they're so tiny, so, so minuscule. If you wish to do so, that's entirely your choice. You know, it's entirely up to you. But for the, for the painting I'm working on, I don't think I need to. A few more in there as well. Okay. So when you look at how thin these lines are here compared to that one there, that's a freshly loaded brush or this line here. But this is when the paint starts to run out. I'm going to get some slightly thicker one, just off the side wall there. And, and then I'll paint that one in. Now, because it goes beyond the stem, it's difficult to see where it goes, actually, isn't it? So, don't forget you can make it up. Of course you can make it up. Don't tell anybody, though. And bring that one down like so. It's a little bit darker. Let's just join that one onto the bottom as well. I've got another one just here. Just there. That'll do. Okay. And now continue on, barely touching again, which always looks faint a lot. Same colour, same mix, you, you saw me load it. So it's no different. Oh, and by the way, all these little blocks I'm making here, I'm making sure that they're not all the same. That's also quite important as well, because again, when you look at that reference photograph, which is just there, you see what I mean? That all these little gaps all vary in size very often, don't they? Size and a little bit of shape. I mean, a lot of them have got a kind of hard edges, so not too many curvy round edges, are there? So little points here and there like that. So point it, and again, point it. Little blocks, little triangles, a variety of shapes like so. I'm trying to follow this wing underneath, actually, and see where it goes to. Because you can just about make out some very faint wing pattern just underneath this one in the background. It kind of swoops underneath there. 
So as I mentioned, you don't have to paint any of this, really. You don't have to be so precise. As long as you're happy with it. Or happy-ish, anyway. That's what matters. Now, where it gets really, really faint is as the wing recedes, as it goes into the background there, it gets a little bit fainter, doesn't it? To get around that, just use some of your colour there, look. So this one, which is still more of a kind of creamy consistency, pop it into another well. I've got one left with a little bit more water. Then you've got a weaker version of that, a bit more, I suppose, a weaker version of that one in there, which you can then use for this far away area and a little bit more around there as well. So it's a little bit fainter. It will give a more feeling of, um, I don't know, more of a three-dimensional feel as if it's going towards the background. And that's exactly what we want to create on that wing. These two are in the foreground, aren't they? But these two, especially that one, it's kind of tilting away from us, disappearing into the background, which is why they're slightly out of focus on the reference photograph. Now what you can do, we've got this little bit of water here in a separate pot. If you find that when you paint this and you look back at it again, you think, actually, that might be a little bit on the dark side there. So what you can do is very lightly go over the line, very lightly, and that will soften down that line and take a little bit of paint off. You've got to go precisely over that same line, just kind of lighten it down again. So you can use a lifting off technique if you do it very carefully and gently, be gentle, just over the top of there. And that will do the trick. So if you find your lines a little bit too dark, you know you can lift those lines off. Now, one thing I wanted to just quickly say to you, and I will nearly finish this now, is when you're working on a painting, you get to this stage where you think, oh, I've nearly finished it, I've nearly finished it. Don't rush it, okay? Don't rush. Take your time still. Slow yourself down. Slow down. I know it's so tempting just to kind of get that brush on there quickly and quickly whiz it through and say, right, done it. Okay, what's next? But take your time. Especially when you're working on something as delicate as this. I've actually got a video which looks at painting delicate fine lines. You should see it to the top right. I'll see you there and thanks for watching.